Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into the world of ad blocking and network security. We'll be exploring how to set up a Pi hole on your MicroTik router, effectively creating a powerful ad blocking and content filtering system for your entire network. For those unfamiliar, Pi hole acts as a DNS sinkhole, essentially blocking unwanted websites and advertisements before they even reach your devices. This not only improves browsing speed by eliminating ads, but also enhances online privacy and security. And with MicroTik routers, known for their customizability and advanced features, integrating PyHole allows for granular control over your network experience. So, whether you are tired of intrusive ads or simply want to take charge of your network security, this guide is for you. Buckle up as we'll walk you through the step-by-step -step process of installing and configuring PyHole on your MicroTik device. My name is Philip. let's get started. All right, folks, let's dive into the setup process. We'll be installing PyHole as a container on your MicroTik device. Just a heads up you'll need a MicroTIG router with either ARM, ARM64 or x86 architecture. Pro tip, if your router has a USB port, I highly recommend using an external drive for storage. Internal storage isn't ideal in this case. For this demo, I'm using an RB5009, but any other ARM-based MicroTIG router with a USB port will work just fine. And speaking of USB, let's get this drive plugged in. I've already formatted it to X4, which is what we need. Containers are not supported out of the box. We need to install an additional package to get it running. I have my MicroTik IP hardcoded in the ETC hosts. Moreover, I have deployed my SSH public key from this host so I can execute commands directly. I just type SSH, then the router name and the command to execute. Let's make sure our router is up to date. Next, let's check our CPU architecture. It's ARM64, running OS version 7.14. Mind that Containers are only supported on ARM, ARM64 and x86 architectures. We'll need a container software package. For that, let me download all 7.14 ARM packages from MicroTik download section. Mind that OS version and architecture needs to match. Now, let's extract the container package from the archive and copy it to our MicroTik device. To get the software installed, we need to reboot our router. This will take a while, but I will fast forward. Next, let's enable container support. This will ask you to physically unplug the power from your device. Let's do that now. I will fast forward that as well. Okay, container package has been installed. Now our router support containers, yay. You can install various other containerized applications that can benefit your home network, like Home Assistant for smart home automation, MQTT for messaging between devices, or even Free Radius for network authentication. So explore the options and see what works best for your needs. For our containers to access other networks, we need to do a few things. First one is creating a bridge that our containers will plug into. Okay, the bridge is there. Let's assign 172.17.0.1 IP to the bridge interface. Uh, the bridge will be default gateway for the containers. If you have Docker installed on your local PC, then please use a different network so the network ranges don't clash. Now, let's create a VETH virtual interface with 172.17.0.2 IP and the gateway pointing to the bridge. VETH is like a virtual wire. One end is plugged into the container 
and the other end is plugged into the bridge. Finally, let's configure masquerading to the container network so it can access external networks. Don't forget to allow the traffic on the firewall. Now, let's pull a PyHole image from Docker Hub. I will do it on my server and then send this image to the router. For that, let's execute Docker pull. Mind that I'm setting the platform as Linux ARM64. This needs to match the router architecture. Now, let's save this image as star archive. We'll need to send the image to a dedicated folder on our external drive on the router. First, let's check our USB disk name. It's USB 1. Let's transfer the PyHole image to our USB external drive. I will log into our router via SFTP. Let's change the directory to our external storage. Create a folder where we'll store our images. Go to that folder and upload our image there. Now let's set up the PyHole container itself. We'll need to create two special areas on our storage device called mount points. These act like folders, but they point to specific location on the physical drive. PyHole will use these mount points to store its configuration files, ensuring they persist even after container restarts. Basically, uh, etc DNS mask inside the container will point to etc DNS mask on our external drive, and etc PyHole inside the container will point to etc folder on the external storage. Thanks to that, even if our container is restarted, we don't lose our configuration. Let's also define three environment variables. Uh, first one defines the DNS mask daemon should run as root. Another variable is the time zone. Last one is the password that we'll use to log into PyHole GUI. Mind that all our environment variables are grouped into a group called PyHole. It's time to start our container. We'll specify the image to use. Uh, that's the file we've downloaded from the Docker Hub and uploaded to images folder on the external drive. Then we specify the name of the list containing our environment variables. Then we specify the virtual interface name. Uh, we'll set the logging to true. We'll define the mount points uh, and specify the root folder pointing to our external storage. Basically, our image will be decompressed to that folder. Finally, let's set the container to start on boot. Container has been created as stopped. Last thing we need to do is start it. Okay, PyHole should be running. Let me log into the GUI. I will provide the password that was set in the environment variable. Let's go to settings, DNS, and allow connections from all networks. By default, PyHole only allows queries from the local networks. This option is needed as we want devices that are in a separate network to query the DNS. Now, let's test if our PyHole DNS is working. I will query our new DNS for Google.com. Works. Let's go to CNN just to see how the pages look without any ad blocking. Next, I will reconfigure my PC to use the PyHole as the DNS server. Let's apply the configuration. Okay, our DNS server is set. Let me refresh the page to get some traffic. If we look at the PyHole statistics, I can see that almost 64% of the queries have been blocked. Query log will show us more details. Of course, there are other options to get the PyHole DNS assigned to our network. One being advertising the PyHole DNS IP via DHCP, another one being intercepting traffic on port 53 UDP, or using the built-in router resolver to point to PyHole. Alright folks, that's it for setting up PyHole on your MicroTIG router. 
With this powerful ad blocker and content filtering running, you'll enjoy a cleaner, faster and more secure browsing experience on your entire network. Remember, this method lets you install other containerized applications as well, so feel free to explore and customize your network setup to your liking. If you have any questions or need further assistance, leave a comment down below and I will be happy to help. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more tech tutorials and tips. Thanks for watching.